Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Let's begin with this morning's headlines. Debt toll of the Gujarat violence rises to 10 face of the agitation. Hardik Patel warns of intensifying. The stir forces are on high alert. Protesting ex-servicemen meet army chief over OROP. No headway despite hectic back-channel parlays. All 12 central trade unions to meet today to discuss strategy for nationwide strike on September 2nd against labour reforms. Decisive third and final test match begins today in Colombo. India and Sri Lanka have a lot to play for as the series is tied at one apiece. And it's time for feasting and fun as Onam is being celebrated by Malayalis the world over. Well, the death toll in Gujarat violence has risen to 10, two days of curfew and the presence of heavy forces have led to an uneasy calm across the state. In few cities, life is limping back to normal, but forces remain on high alert following a warning by Hardik Patel of intensifying the stir. Our correspondent Vishal Daiya brings you this ground report. Following two days of unrest, an uneasy calm now prevails in Gujarat. Curfew has been lifted from Surat City after no violence was reported on Thursday. However, the clampdown continues in other cities. The ban on mobile internet and WhatsApp is likely to continue till Friday night. The city is business factories and police station Sartana or Kapodra police station is that man. Mosuba Advej is Utalia or police car presence Jovi Barse Forsaiti, some deployed hai. Uchadi Karibi field mehe or patrolling fixed points, Sapuj Bandavasan. In a bid to instill confidence among people in the wake of violence, the army conducted flag marches at several places on Thursday. Shops, schools, and business establishments, however, remained shut. Vehicular movement was also restricted. The quota issue rocked the Gujarat Assembly as well. Several Congress MLAs were suspended for a day following uproar in the House. The Congress has extended support to the quota demand by Patels, saying the government must provide a suitable package to them without disturbing the present OBC structure. The question about the present scenario of reservation has to be uh, stand as, as it is given to SD, SC and OBC. And more reservation can come for other classes like Patidar, like Banyas, Vaniks and Brahmins and Rajputs. That is also to be considered, I think, the sympathy for the young people is always there. Meanwhile, the Gujarat High Court has issued a notice to the Chief of Ahmedabad Police asking him to explain the cause of Tuesday's clashes. The police had allegedly lotty charged on the agitating partidars at the GMDC ground, sparking widespread violence across the state. With Vishal Daya, Bureau Inputs, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, notwithstanding appeals for peace by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Hardik Patel, the face of the Patel agitation, has threatened to intensify the stir in the coming days. He's urged farmers of his community not to supply essential commodities like vegetables and milk to cities in protest against the government. Our correspondent Vishal Daya spoke to him in Ahmedabad. Let's listen in to what he had to say. Gujarat mein Patel andolan ek bar fir se charcha mein hai aur. इस वक्त हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं अहमदाबाद की सड़कों पर हम लोग इस वक्त चल रहे हैं और हमारे साथ इस वक्त मौजूद हैं पटेल आंदोलन का जो चेहरा हैं 22 साल के नौजवान युवक हार्दिक पटेल हार्दिक का स्वागत है आपका राज्यसभा टीवी में आ, सबसे पहला सवाल अब जो उठता है वो ये कि आ, जनता जानना चाह रही है कि दो महीने से पिछले दो महीने से तीन महीने से जिस तरह से आप रैलियां कर रहे हैं अलग अलग जगह सभाएं कर रहे हैं लोगों को संबोधित कर रहे हैं अभी आपने अहमदाबाद में एक बहुत बड़ी रैली को संबोधित किया क्या मांग है सीधे सीधे शब्दों में पटेल समुदाय की तरफ से सरकार को पिछले दस सालों से जिस प्रकार पटेल समुदाय को जॉब में एजुकेशन में फार्मर को जिस प्रकार नुकसान हो रहा है हमारी सिर्फ इतनी मांग है कि सत्ताईस 
जो ओ कोटा है यहाँ पर गुजरात में उसे हमें शामिल किया जाए बस इतनी सिंपल सी मांग है लेकिन सरकार कह रही है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जो फैसला है उसके मुताबिक 50 प्रतिशत की एक कैप लगाई गई है जिस कैप से ऊपर जाना संभव नहीं है और कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जिसे कहा जाए संविधान के मुताबिक जिसे कहा जाए तो ये जो मांग आप लोग कर रहे हैं पटेल समुदाय की तरफ सरकार कर पाए ऐसा संभव नहीं दिख रहा है उनको जी एक्चुअली हम वही बात करें कि हम 50 प्रतिशत से ज़्यादा नहीं मांग रहे गुजरात में सत्ताईस प्रतिशत ओ है उसी में हम मांग रहे और सुप्रीम कोर्ट कहती थी हम संविधान चेंज नहीं कर सकते अरे सर जी रात को साढ़े तीन बजे किसी आतंकवादी के लिए सुप्रीम कोर्ट खुल सकती है तो इस देश के युवा के भविष्य के लिए इस देश के युवा के लिए अगर संविधान चेंज नहीं हो सकता तो बहुत बड़ी गड़बड़ समझना चाहिए हमें इस देश में इस वक्त जो तनावपूर्ण माहौल जो इस वक्त पूरे प्रदेश में जो दिखाई दे रहा है आ, क्योंकि आ, कई जगह पर कर्फ्यू लगा कई जगह आगजनी की वारदात हुई हालांकि अब थोड़े से हालात सामान्य होते दिख रहे हैं लेकिन ऐसे मौके पर आपका क्या संदेश है अपने जो समुदाय के लोग हैं उनको उन नौजवान युवकों को जो कि आपके कहने पर आपकी कॉल पर रैलियों में आए जनसभाओं में आए शामिल हुए क्या संदेश है क्या करना चाहिए अब इस वक्त उन्हें हम सबको यही कहते हैं कि गुजरात में पहले तो शांति बनाए रखें हमारे साथ जिसने भी ये ना इंसाफी की है हम उनको जरूर सजा देंगे पहली बात कि जो जे डी सी जे ग्राउंड पर जितने भी पुलिस अधिक उनको सस्पेंड किया जाए तीन सौ दो के तहत उन पर मुकदमा चलाया जाए जहाँ जहाँ पर हमारे बच्चों की हत शहीद हुए हैं हमारे बच्चे शहीद कहेंगे हम उन्हें वो शहीद हुए उन बच्चों के एरिया में जो पीआई हो पीएसआई हो जो कांस्टेबल हो उन सबको सस्पेंड किया जाए तीन के तहत मुकदमा चलना चाहिए और उनको परिवार को मुआवजा देना चाहिए और अगले दिनों में वक्त देख हम हमारे हक की लड़ाई लड़ेंगे और ये आंदोलन जारी है अहिंसा के मार्गों पर Well, joining me now from Gujarat is uh, our correspondent Vishal Dahiya. Vishal, uh, after a day of violence or a day marred by violence, of course, we saw a day of eerie calm. What's the situation like right now as we speak in Ahmedabad? Well, thank you, Ahmedabad. Uh, the situation uh, in most most of the areas seems to be under uh, the control of the administration, and uh, the steps which have been taken by Uh, the local administration and the police authorities out here are are, are clearly intending to uh, instill confidence in the common people that uh, they can easily continue with uh, their normal routine and uh, you know it's it's uh, uh, it's 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 an attempt to uh, bring the life back to normalcy in uh, the entire city of uh, the capital city of ahmedabad uh, overnight uh, we have uh, cross checked early morning overnight there have been no untoward incidents uh, in uh, the city or uh, any other uh, uh, you know town which was uh, put under curfew uh, two days ago so uh, clearly uh, the first priority of the administration was to um, bring peace uh, uh, in short law and order and that is something uh, that's 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 the path on which they seem to be uh, moving ahead steadily you know the young leader hardik patel vishal has uh, called for uh, you know protest to intensify in the coming days now that is something that the authorities will need to watch out for and will have to be vigilant about well yes uh, and that's something uh, uh, which uh, was sort of expected uh, uh, as well because uh, you know uh, the demands which have been put forth by them are not being agreed to by the government and uh, you know the the violence which happened uh, two days ago that has sort of uh, uh, you know increased uh, the uh, divide or rather the communication indeed all right vishal daya will have to leave to that thank you so much for joining us uh, on the phone line there this morning and putting things into perspective for us and bringing us the latest update from gujarat moving on now while the government battles the patel agitation there is another challenge staring at it in its face all 12 top central trade unions are meeting today in delhi to chart out their strategy for a proposed nationwide strike on september 2nd the meeting comes after their discussions with the government failed the proposed strike is against labor reforms differences on various issues continue but the government has agreed to the formula proposed by the unions for calculating the minimum wages Trade unions say that the possibility of calling off the strike is bleak after they conveyed to the government that they are not convinced with the effort being made by the center to find a way forward. The trade unions have put forth a 12-point charter of demands before the labor ministry including that on labor reforms, inflation, minimum wages, social security, employment and disinvestment in PSUs.
Well, joining me for a chat this morning is Amitabh Goa, National Working Committee member of the CITU. Good morning and thank you so much for joining me on the program. You know, what are the main demands really as far as the 12 main, uh, t uh, you know, trade unions, uh, central trade unions are concerned? Uh, we have put uh, 12 demands in that uh, most important demands are as follows. Uh, one is that uh, stop contractualization mm -hmm. of the work, the minimum wage is 15,000 rupees, then um, stop the price rise, skyrocketing price rise, and uh, then extension of social security. And uh, also ratification of the two conventions of ILO. Mm. Uh, these are the main things. And uh, we tried to have open discussion Government. What happened at the discussion? I mean, wh wh what were the sticking points where you all did not agree on? Uh, we wanted a specific assurance and its implementation before we go to strike. Hmm. Uh, only government uh, gave assurances. And some, they said that, okay, demands are all right, genuine, everything, but we have limited capacity and uh, we will see to it, we will think about it. Uh, these kind of discussions we had much earlier, even before declaring the strike, the assurances are given but never implemented anything. So that has pushed us uh, to go for strike. So are you going to call off the strike or are you going to go ahead with it under whatever circumstance? Well, strike can be called off if anything visibly uh, decided and showed before the workers. Mm. Uh, but so far, even yesterday, we had meeting, um, yesterday's meeting, also the same thing is repeated. So we had no other way but to go ahead for strike and uh, to develop a strategy for strike. We will have a meeting of all the Central Trade Union together uh, at 3 uh, p.m. today. Mm -hmm. You know, and what is it that you're against as far as the government's labor reforms are concerned? Well, these labor reforms are, we call it a draconian, hmm. in the sense that it is going to snatch all the existing rights and privileges. Majority of the rights and the privileges it is going to snatch. The trade union activities will be very much marginalized, and even the trade union's existence will also be endangered, the changes which has been already um, proposed by the government. And... Uh, we said that, what's your objective? One way they're going to increase the working hours, they're going to squeeze the uh, income, wages earning of the workers, and the other way, uh, they are restricting the activities of trade union on the trade union rights. So therefore, what will left for the trade unions, so it, it will be a, a converted to a recreation club. Mm. Okay. club come so, and enjoy. So that's something that you're uh, mm. uh, against and that's something that you're worried There's about, that major. trade unions will be rendered redundant. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, if you go ahead with your strike now on September 2nd, in yeah. a way, won't it be holding the country to ransom because when, uh, you know, the laborers go on strike, it definitely affects and impacts the economy of the country? The country is already suffering every day. The workers already are on the uh, push to the wall. And people cannot, so many people are going hungry at the end of the day. So one more day of their suffering will not be very much for them. But if country suffers economically, we, if our, we are held responsible, government is more responsible. Hmm. So therefore, this argument that country's economy will be hit is already hit because of the government's policies. It doesn't hold good. If the government said that, okay, uh, we will try to see or we will implement whatever we have assured you, with the implementation visible, we can convince the workers not to go to strike. So you're saying the onus then lies on the government first and then on the trade unions? You're right. You're right. Okay. So now, going forward, what is it that you think that will, is going to happen? Do you think that the government is going to agree to some of your demands? If the government does not agree to your demands, then what? Are you going to continue for, to have further strikes? Uh, that strategy will be prepared after the strikes, ob our observation on the strikes. So how would be the... Uh, repercussion in the workers, how much they participate, how much they are uh, 
intended to go ahead with the struggle. Mm. These are the things which depends on the third's performance. But then a, a very small thing I wanted to mention here that we also need to find out why government is so much adamant. Mm. Why government is going to uh, change the laws against the interest of the workers. The, fundamentally, this is because of the things that they want to have more investment, FDI, mm. so that this current account deficit can be overcome. And for that, they want investment from the uh, other countries, rich okay. countries. So the government, of course, is saying and, that they are doing it to boost the economy, but you somewhere do not agree with the government. No, that we agree. We do not have any problem. But when the uh, countries like USA and the European Union, uh, they say that your trade unions are too much, mm. you have given too much allowance to them to function, so you will have to curb their rights. Here that's, lies our that's problem. Something. Okay, Here lies that's our something problem. that you're against. All right, uh, Amitabh Gua, thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning and putting your side of the story uh, for us as well. Moving on now, of course, the stalemate over one rank, one pension issue is far from over. No headway was made to resolve the issue despite talks between agitating ex-servicemen and the government. While hectic black back-channel talks are on, Army Chief General Dalbir Singh met representatives of veterans at his South Block office on Thursday. But there has been no forward movement in the talks. The sticky issue is that the government wants 2011 to be the base year besides no 3% annual increase. It also wants payment to begin from April 1st, 2015, which has been rejected by the veterans. Meanwhile, two more protesting veterans who were on fast unto death were evacuated to Army Research and Referral Hospital in Delhi on Thursday. There has been no meeting as far as we are concerned. We waited for quite some time. And since the people who are talking to us, they were with Prime Minister. So we have come back after speaking only to the Chief of Army staff. Mm -hmm. And he has nothing to report than what was done yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we will take it forward. That's what he said, that he will speak on again to him and let us know. प्रधानमंत्री जी के पास चला गया उसके बाद में उसके ऊपर मैं कुछ घोषणा करना बराबर नहीं होगा तो वो, वो कर रहे हैं एक्टिवली कर रहे हैं इतना मुझे मालूम है There's a look now at what's expected to make news during the course of today in our segment the day ahead India will begin its month long celebration saluting 50 years of the 1965 India Pakistan war starting today President Pranab Mukherjee will lay the wreath at the Amar Jawan Jyoti honoring the soldiers who laid their lives 50 years ago. The celebrations will conclude on September 22nd. A victory carnival at Rajpath honoring the Marshal of Air Force Arjun Singh will be the other highlight of the month long event. Defence Minister Manohar Parikar will chair a crucial Defence Acquisition Council meeting today during which some significant decisions on defence procurements could be taken. The DAC set up in 2001 as part of the post-Kargil reforms in defence sector approves the long-term integrated perspective plan for the forces. The DAC has cleared defence purchases worth over 1.5 lakh crore rupees since May last year. The BCCI Working Committee will meet in Kolkata today to decide on the fate of the two IPL franchises of Chennai Super Kings and Rajasthan Royals who have been suspended for two years. The meeting gained significance after the Madras High Court rejected a petition by the CSK to stay its two-year suspension from IPL yesterday. It will also be interesting to see if the meet would be attended by former BCCI Chief N. Srinivasan after the Loda Committee's order in July. Well, it's time for a short break now, but coming up after that, the third and the final test between India and Sri Lanka will get underway in Colombo today. That and other news on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Live Rajya Sabha session. News, views, reports, and analysis you can trust on social media. Subscribe, follow. 
लाइक राज्यसभा टेलीविजन Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the government has declared the nominations for the NDA government's flagship program, the Smart City Mission. The list includes 24 state capitals, with Uttar Pradesh heading it. However, key names like Patna, Kolkata, and Bengaluru are missing. Jasmo. The government kick-starting its flagship Smart Cities program. 98 locations will be developed as smart cities. Two other will join the list later. One each from Jammu and Kashmir and Uttar Pradesh. UP heads the list with 13 smart cities. Tamil Nadu follows with 12. Maharashtra has 10. Madhya Pradesh will have 7, while three each are in Bihar and Andhra Pradesh. Bangalore, Patna, Trivandrum, Kolkata, and Puducherry don't find a place on the list. The names were selected through intra-city competition and evaluated on parameters like service levels, financial and institutional capacity, and past track records. I have consulted all the states twice, thrice. Consulted municipal commissioners, had interaction with mayors, elected representatives of people. We need people's participation and cooperation. We need the smart cities require smart leadership. smart people without their cooperation this cannot be successful the center year marked 48000 crore rupees for developing 100 smart cities each city gets central assistance of 100 crore rupees per year for 5 years in the first year the government will select 24 smart cities we are not just aiming at making our urban landscape look fanciful and flashy and the prime objective is to enhance the quality of urban life Smart city features will include promoting mixed land use, housing and inclusiveness, walkable localities, open spaces, transport options, citizen friendly governance and an identity. Each state will get at least one smart city with a quality of life that the government hopes will be comparable to European cities. The top 20 cities will be financed this year. The rest will be asked to get their act together, focus on deficiencies, and prepare for round two. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the government is venturing into a rather prickly reform involving the privatisation of banks. It plans to set up a bank investment company that will bring down its stake in select public sector banks to below 50 percent. At least two expert committees have suggested this over the last two decades. but the task is easier as a report two weeks after it announced its seven rainbow reforms for the banking sector the government is working on yet another ambitious plan to privatize some public sector banks it holds majority stake in all 19 of them and all are hit by a liquidity crisis the government must decide that whether they will continue to hold 52% share in the public sector banks they must bring it down to the level of 33% so that the further equity of these banks can be diluted to raise capital and this problem of budgetary allocation by government of india can also be stopped in 1998 the m narsimham committee on banking sector reforms recommended dilution of government stake in public sector banks to just 33% the report was however not implemented In 2014 the PJ Nayak committee suggested a stake dilution below 50% but that needs amendments to the Bank Nationalization Act of 1970 and 1980 and also the SBI Act not easy for a government that doesn't have a majority in the Rajya Sabha no clear road map is still available uh, as to whether uh, that is on not on or if on what is the timeline etc etc Uh, although there is a talk uh, that yes government will uh, dilute uh, some of the stake uh, and will raise capital uh, from the market government holds 58 to 60% stake in the top 5 public sector banks including state bank of india bank of baroda punjab national bank canara bank and union bank of india the government's plan means the divested banks can decide employee pay packages or raise additional capital from the market and also be free from government oversight 
However, any move to privatize banks is likely to face stiff resistance from trade unions and opposition parties. This is Krishnanand Ripati's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Let's now get you some more national news and updates in our segment nationwide. CBI has filed a charge sheet against Sharda Group Chairman Sudipto Sen and his two companies for alleged cheating. The charge sheet has been filed in the additional Chief Magistrate Court in Alipur in Kolkata. This is a 17 charge sheet filed in the Chit Fund scam which spread across four states, West Bengal, Odisha, Assam and Tripura in which investors were allegedly promised higher returns on fixed deposits. So far, the CBI has filed uh, charges, chart sheets, uh, indicting Madan Mitra and others, namely Sharda owner Sadipto Sen, suspended Trinamool Rajya Sabha MP Kunal Ghosh and others. The Uttar Pradesh Legislative Assembly passed a resolution for income tax exemption on all emoluments of the legislators, similar to the one enjoyed by members of parliament. UP Minister for Parliamentary Affairs Azam Khan moved the resolution for sending the demand to the central government with the consent of Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav. Hundreds of thousands of people continue to live in miserable conditions in Riyasi district of Jammu and Kashmir as the road connecting the region has been blocked due to landslide. More than 2 lakh people living in and around 35 villages of the district are cut off from other parts of the state for the last one week as the road connecting Arna city and Rajori district remains blocked. Here's a look now at some developments from around the world in our world wrap. A panel of NASA scientists have uh, said that sea levels worldwide have risen nearly three inches on an average since 1992 due to the warming waters and melting ice. NASA made the announcement after studying the sea level rise from space for the past 23 years. Long-term satellite imaging study has shown a dramatic rise in sea levels due to human-caused capital change. In 2013, a United Nations panel predicted sea levels would rise from 1 to 3 feet by the end of the century. The new research, however, shows that sea level rise most likely will be at the high end of that range. People... A people gathered on Thursday in the Nigerian capital of Abuja to mark 500 days since 219 schoolgirls were abducted by Boko Haram militants. Most of the protesters were the relatives of the kidnapped uh, who held photos of the missing girls and chanted slogans at the government's inability to rescue them. Boko Haram fighters had abducted the schoolgirls on April 14, 2014. Well, thousands of people took to the streets of Athens on Thursday to join an anti-austerity rally organized by Greece's Com Communist Party. The Communist Party leader Dimitris Koutsabas expressed his opposition to the current government, saying the bailout signed by the former Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras was uh, unbearable for the Greek people. Vouching for his party, Koutsabas uh, called on Greeks to punish those responsible for anti-austerity vote and said that the Communist Party is capable of fighting against the bailouts. Moving on to some sports news now. India and Sri Lanka will have a lot to play for in the final test starting today in Colombo. With the series at stake, injuries to top-order batsmen have forced India to call in reinforcements. Sri Lanka too will be looking for someone to fill in Sangakara's boots. Here's the match preview. India is eyeing its first test series in Sri Lanka after 12 years. But the prospects took a hit after openers Shikhar Dhawan and Murli Vijay were ruled out because of injury. Adding to the woes, wicketkeeper Ridhiman Saha will also sit out in the key final test. Indian team has called in Naman Ojha to replace Saha, while Cheteshwar Pujara is likely to open with Lokesh Rahul. Despite a changed look, team director Ravi Shastri feels it is good enough to end India's series drought overseas. We play for only one reason. We play to win. So we've got our chance ourselves in a position now where if you win this test match, you win the series, which is massive. So there's no point being uh, shy of going for a win. At the same time, you know, it's not a case of being overconfident. You, you know, you've got to have the right balance and go and play proper cricket like we did in the last test match over five days. Sri Lanka too are likely to make a couple of changes to their batting lineup after Sangakara's retirement. Upul Tharanga could take up his place. 
The team is also likely to replace wicketkeeper Jehan Mubarak with Kusal Pereira. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And before we wrap up this bulletin, we here at Rajya Sabha Television would like to wish all our viewers a very happy Onam. And I'm going to leave you today with visuals of Onam festivities. Bye-bye.